Yeah. We're here to talk splits today, and we are not talking about Simone Biles. Splits. These are statistics that we look at for fantasy football to tell you how good a player is in certain situations, right? This player performed this well when that guy was on the field or not on the field, when that guy was home or away, when that guy caught three passes in a game or fewer, how many fantasy points did he put up? So we're going to go through six splits, stats today that I think are very telling heading into the 2022 fantasy football season. Some of them you done heard, some of them might be new to you, but they're worth repeating and they're worth yelling at you about it. But that will be the last time you hear of it because what we got to do now is tuck our shirts Stop yelling. Let's see. And this video is going to be quick today, but, but just a reminder, our draft guide goes live on Monday, August 1st. All right. You can go get it on bdge.co right now. It's available for purchase, but the easiest and the least expensive way to get it is through prize picks. If you go to prizepicks.com or use the link in the description below and you deposit $10 for the first time on that app, not only are they going to match whatever you put down to play with, and we're going to be using prize picks props throughout the entire season. So you want to be on the app regardless, but you're getting our draft guide both our rookie and our season long draft guide absolutely free by depositing on their website and in there we'll have our rankings for the draft it'll be updated each week after the preseason games to let you know what you need to know and what you don't need to know we have our must draft list we have our all fade list we've got some tools that y'all will find helpful in there in much greater depth than today's video. The first split we need to know about is Mr. Aaron Jones with and without Devontae Adams. Since 2019, we have a seven-game sample size of Aaron Jones playing without Devontae Adams on the field. All of these splits are brought to you by Rotoviz, the Rotoviz Game Splits app that is available on their website, but it is behind a paywall in order to use. We will link that down below if you're interested. Seven games. The numbers are massive. You can see that his half PPR fantasy points per game goes up from 15 to 23.4. PPR, six. 16.48 to 25.97. Receptions go from 2.9 up to 5. Receiving touchdowns, hype, targets 3.9 to 6.7. At the end of the day, this is what we are looking at. Aaron Jones is going to be a menace in the receiving game this year. Okay, Christian Watson's missing all of camp. Robert Tunyon is coming back from an ACL tear. Devontae Adams is obviously gone to Las Vegas this year. Literally all they have is like Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb there right now. I don't see a world where Dylan and Aaron Jones do not eat and eat and eat and eat. Gluttony is going to be happening in Green Bay this year. I would be shocked if Aaron Jones does not play a significant portion of his snaps from the slot this year, Austin Eckler-ish, and then finish inside the position's top five in targets, in receptions, in receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. With Devontae Adams gone, Aaron Jones is going to catch a sickening number of passes. Next up, let's shit on the Chicago Bears a little bit more because we haven't done that enough this offseason. I want to talk about Justin Fields taking over as the quarterback, right? And I was a guy who had a decent amount of Darnell Mooney last year, and I was I was really excited about him going into the year because I remember he has a big, big, big games, and now Allen Robinson is gone, and it feels like he should be the one there, and he should back into insane, insane volume, but I think there is something to be said here about his splits with and without Justin Fields. On the left side, you have the 12 games with Justin Fields. On the right side, you have the five games without Justin Fields. His reception numbers go from four with Fields to seven. His target numbers, more importantly, go from 7.3 up to 11.2. I don't know if it was a chemistry thing. I don't know if it was Justin Fields taking off and running the ball more, which is definitely a possibility and something that will probably bring down the other skill players in this offense ultimately. But I do think the idea that Darnell Mooney is like a can't miss, you know, wide receiver two, wide receiver three going into this year is a little bit skewed. And I think people need to understand that he actually wasn't great with Justin Fields. He wasn't bad whatsoever, but he was much better without Justin Fields. The numbers, the volume, and the production was a lot higher. Same thing can be said for David Montgomery. You look at the eight games with Justin Fields on the left and the five games without Justin Fields on the right. He was way better when Justin Fields was off the fields. And a lot of that came because Justin Fields is a scrambler. So you see on the left side, both his rush attempts and his targets went down when Justin Fields was on the field, right? Because Justin Fields, when he is running, he's taking away overall carries from the team. This is a slow offense. This is a bad offensive line, taking away carries from the running backs, but also a mobile quarterback tends to run the ball more. 
Okay, so a lot of the dump offs that Andy Dalton might have been delivering to David Montgomery end up being scrambles outside of the pocket. Another thing that I do not like about Justin Fields and the skill players around him this year because of splits like this. The one positive is you could see that his rushing attempts go down by about five carries per game with Fields on the field, but his efficiency goes up. I think that has a lot to do with, right, the mobile quarterback where now an extra linebacker or whatever tends to have to watch out for him scrambling rather than fill a hole where the running back typically goes to. But like going from 4.1 yards per carry to 4.5 yards per carry on an overall sample size of like 16 carries per game is going to get you like an extra 0.8 fantasy points per game. So I really could care less about his yards per carry in between the 20s going up a little bit. The rest of these stats are very, very concerning. With David Montgomery, I also think Khalil Herbert is going to take uh, a decent amount of work in Chicago's backfield with this new coaching staff. Next split we got, I'm on Ross St. Brown with versus without TJ Hawkinson. This is fucking staggering. I was going to do something with DeAndre Swift, and these numbers were even more eye-popping. I think it makes a little bit more sense because they probably run routes at the similar parts of the field. I'm on Ross St. Brown, 11 games with Hawkinson. On the right, five games without Hawkinson. These are like possibly the biggest jump slash splits going on in the NFL today. The 11 games with Hawkinson, 7.1 half PPR points. The five games without him, 21.2 half PPR points. Receptions go from 4.8 to 8.2. Receiving touchdowns go from 0.09 to 0.8. Hawkinson is obviously a bigger target, can be used in the red zone pretty significantly. Targets, 6.18 to 11. These are massive. And I'm not saying like Amon Ra is going to be bad with Hawkinson back on the field. This offense will be pretty similar, but a lot of the production Amon Ra St. Brown had was with Hawkinson sideline, was with DeAndre Swift sideline. So it's hard to really say how dominant he will be as a one. And I don't think the Lions see him as a one. You don't draft somebody as a, you know, a really, really early first round pick, Jameson Williams, to come into your offense unless you see that person as the one. So While I'm a little bit hesitant on like Amon Ross St. Brown this year in terms of his upside for fantasy, there are other concerns here, uh, just knowing what their offense is going to be when all these guys are on the field together. I think there's some more things you could probably factor in here. The fact, you know, like rookie wide receivers tend to start off slow. His play time was a little bit lower in the beginning of the year. He became a full-time player over the second half of the year. So that's probably more predictive of what's to come. But again, it's hard to actually get a grasp on how good he is, how good he'll be for fantasy, because these are unrealistic numbers. I mean, we can't expect fucking 94.8 receiving yards per game over 17 games because Hawkinson and Swift will both be on thy field. Next split. And this is one that I kind of have to adjust a little bit because we've had some news over the last few days. But Mike Evans without Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown on the field. So we know Antonio Brown's obviously not going to be there. Chris Godwin, we've got some news that he'll be back on the field. I still, Chris Godwin, I think will be like practicing with the Bucks, but I still would be really surprised if we see him on the field before like week four or five or six. And we have a five game sample size over the last two years without Godwin and Brown on the field. And you see Mike Evans just becomes an absolute alpha, right? Five games, 18.4 half PPR points, 21.4 PPR points, six receptions, 1.2 touchdowns per game. He becomes like the sole. This is also uh, has nothing to do with Gronkowski. Gronkowski now out. They signed Kyle Rudolph, but they're not the same player, obviously. Mike Evans, 1.2 touchdowns per game. He will be the red zone target in this offense. 8.2 targets, 82.2 receiving yards. Now, I understand, again, a lot of moving parts here because they just signed Julio, but I think anyone who's even slightly in tune with fantasy would have Julio projected for like 300 to 400 receiving yards, all right? Some of them might be downfield shots. He's never been a big time like red zone player. He doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. This doesn't, Julio signing doesn't hurt Mike Evans as much as like people that have no idea what the fuck's going on would assume it would. But with AB gone, Gronk gone, expecting Godwin to miss a significant portion of the beginning of the year, I'm still very much much in on Evans. The Julio signing, if that lowers his ADP to like the early third round, give me all of that. We have two more splits before we get you out of here. One other thing I want to say is we've got a lot of fucking questions about whether or not this hat is for sale. I'm going to order more of them because we've gotten so many of these fucking questions. All right. This is not me faking this. This is not me being like, oh, you guys keep asking about my skincare routine. Let me tell you about it when no one fucking has. We have so many fucking comments about this. So I actually set up a landing page outside of YouTube. It'll be one of the first links in the description for like a pre-order page. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to put any information in. But if you are interested in buying one of the hats when they go live. I'm going to get a very limited quantity. I'll probably order like 20 to 30 of them. So the first 20 to 30 on the email list will get emailed out when they go live and they'll have the first chance to purchase them. So I'm probably going to order them depending on the demand from the pre-order list. I'll order them within the next like week or so. They should be into the office within two weeks and then be available for purchase, you know, by, you know, early August, mid-August. So depending on, you know, if you guys want these shits or not, go down into the description 
click the link. It'll take you to a page where you literally just put like your name and email. So I know that you're interested and I'll shoot you out an email when we get these and they go live. Thank you. Tyler Higby with versus without Robert Woods. Tyler Higby is a guy who like for some reason just keeps ending up on like people's breakout lists year in and year out. But I do think it's interesting to note they bring in Allen Robinson this year. Obviously Woods is gone. OBJ is gone. They bring in Allen Robinson this year. Robinson is going to operate very, very frequently, almost all the time from the outside. He will be like their guy on the outside. So it doesn't really interfere with what Tyler Higby's doing, but Tyler Higby and Robert Woods are running routes in the very you know, same area. And I think it's worth noting that Higby, six games over the last two years without Robert Woods, and you can see his involvement goes significantly upwards, especially uh, in the red zone. So you go from seven half PPR points a game to 11, 11 PPR or 11 half PPR points for a tight end. It's fucking big time. So over four receptions a game, really involved in the red zone, as you can see, 0.83 touchdowns per game, 6.3 targets per game. I think that's something to keep an eye on. This is obviously going to be a very pass heavy offense. It's going to be a, an electric offense that scores a lot of touchdowns and just scores a lot of overall points. And and if they're down in the red zone a lot, obviously Cup's a monster, Robinson's a monster, but I could see a year where Higby kind of rips off six to seven, maybe eight receiving touchdowns, just luckily. And uh, and that would put him into the category of a tight end one for sure. So now that everybody's off Higby, it might be time to return to grabbing him as your tight end two in an electric offense. And the last split we have here, if you've enjoyed the video so far before we head into this fucking ballerina act, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button on it. Is Mr. Dak Prescott with versus without Amari Cooper? I remember when Amari Cooper came over from Las Vegas or Oakland at the time, and uh, he went nuts those first few games. That first like eight games that he had the second half of the season, and Dak was putting up crazy fucking numbers. And you can see the splits with versus without Amari Cooper, and they are significant. His attempts go down by about five. His completions go down by about five. His passing touchdowns go from like two down to almost one per game. Yards per attempt go down. His passing yardage goes down by 75. So while CeeDee Lamb's an awesome weapon, we like Dalton Schultz a lot. Uh, I'm a fan of Jalen Tolbert. I do think Dak's going to be a little bit neutered this year in fantasy from like a ceiling perspective, okay? They're still going to be fast-paced. They're still going to throw a lot. They're still going to have high volume in terms of targets, but I'm a little bit worried about Dak Prescott and his overall volume. I think the market's pretty in tune with this. Like, I think he's going around like quarterback 10, 11, 12, whereas last year he was like the QB four or five, which was always felt a little weird. Always felt a little grimy taking Dak at like four or five there. Um, so I think the market's kind of in tune with it. I don't think like Amari Cooper is anything amazingly special, but these two clearly had some sort of chemistry where Dak felt more comfortable with him in the offense. And now we have kind of unknowns at the outside weapon position. If CeeDee Lamb's still running in the slot, like who does he trust on the outside? He always trusted Amari Cooper, but I think with Michael Gallup also coming back slowly, we don't know what his situation is when he's going to be on the field. I could see Dak getting off to a really, really slow start. I think his weapons could be fine. I think we see, you know, a bunch of like six for 80 in a touchdown game from CD, but I could see Dak averaging like, you know, 220, 240 a game, one to two touchdowns, and maybe starting off slow before this offense really starts to click without these weapons on the field. All right, that's the last split for today. I will see y'all tomorrow. Make sure you head over to prizepicks.com or use the app. Uh, the link in the description. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit for the first time. See you tomorrow.